Hello, I'm Justice J. Bay with Elodium Morris Cranium, Auntie Colorado. Elodium Morris Cranium, Auntie Colorado is a provincial government within the pre existing sovereignty of the Moroccan Empire. Today, I would like to talk to you about the definition of colored. We as Moors start, need to start getting a fundamental understanding of what the definition of these words really are, whether it's for unconscious Moors or Moors that are conscious. Let's really stick to the fundamental understanding of words. That way, when we start to write our writs, affidavits, we start to enforce treaties, constitutions, declarations, and conventions, we know exactly what the words are and where we can enforce them. So today, we're going to go over the fundamental understanding of the definition of color. So watch this. Most people use the word color, they call themselves colored people. But what I've learned about people is they pronounce words and do not understand the definition of the word. So therefore, they don't understand they're saying something positive or negative about themselves or someone that they're referring to, especially as it relates in law. So in law, words are very specific. So when you refer to yourself as a colored person, let's really discuss what that means in law. Today, we'll be using what's called Henry Campbell Black's Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition, to look up the definition of color. So if you have an opportunity, get your hands on a Black's Law Dictionary somewhere around the published year of 1951. At least that's the book that I have. If you have something around that time frame, great. But try to stick to third and fourth editions. That's where the excellent words are in terms of linear, linear entry. All right? So let's take a look at the definition of color. Color. By common usage in America. Let's stop right there. See, when you're starting to really get into understanding the definition of a word, sometimes they'll give you what's called a little bit of a secret right up front to understand exactly where this term or word came from. All right? So therefore, when you're looking at the definition of color, they're telling you the common usage in America. That means that this is not a term or a word that's used rotarianly around the world that is used really right here by colonists in order to designate people as being crayons. To term someone as being colored means that you're coloring them. We'll talk about that, but the first sentence immediately lets you know there's a little bit of color going on, meaning something fake, something that's describing someone, but it's not necessarily who they are. It's a generic term. So watch this as we continue. This term, so it's telling us a term. What is a term? Let's watch this. A term is not a word. A term is exactly what it tells you right in front of your face. It means it has a beginning and an ending. It will expire. A term will terminate. So therefore, the term color is something that's made up and it does not have anything to do with reality, which means it will be extinct at some point or another. It has a term life. Let's continue. In such phrases as colored persons, quote unquote, what's the quote unquote means? It means that something here needs to be examined and it may or may not be real. It's something that you need to understand and you need to go and examine and look at the substance of it because the reality is as soon as they say quote unquote, that's telling a scholar or anybody that's reading it that these terms are being used and they're not really based in reality. Let's continue. So colored person, the colored race, quote unquote, colored men, quote unquote, and the like. What does and the like mean? Let's stop right there. Most people pass right past that. And the like is almost like saying, uh, for example, or etc. So therefore, when we start seeing and the like, what does that mean? It means example, minority, and the like, minority. Black person, African American, all of these brands fall under what they call and the like. See, the colonists, these people that call themselves administrators, your secret societies, your lawyers, your, your, your attorneys, your barristers, your attorneys, they know exactly that when you use certain words and you don't have a fundamental understanding of it, you immediately are condemning yourself. They know that you're not real, so therefore you don't deserve no respect. You don't deserve any type of rights in law because you're working outside of the law. So understand, when you use these words color, what you're saying is that, number one, 
It's an adjective. We'll talk about that later on. But you're working outside of the law. Let me continue. So, and the like, it is used to designate Negroes or persons. What does the word designate mean? It means that someone designated this for you. They described you as being colored, designated you as that. They don't necessarily make you what it is, right? You know who you are, but just because someone calls you out of your name don't mean you have to answer to that. So therefore, when they designated this word color and you embrace it as a material fact that that's what it is, that means you consent to what it is. You must object to things that you know are not exactly who you are. Let's continue. To designate Negroes or persons of African race, including all persons of mixed blood descended from Negro ancestry. Then you've got the case law. So one of the things that we start understanding in terms of studying law as it relates to the term color is that it's an artificial person, right? We're going to continue to learn that about the definition of color. But color is designated and it comes from America. What part of America? They don't even tell you what part of America, America is geographically located, right? Mainly they're talking about North America because people in other countries don't refer to themselves as color. They refer to them by their free national name. Mexicans don't call themselves brown people. They call themselves Mexicans. It's only in North America we start to call each other by crayon names. Let's continue. Let's see exactly what the courts think about you in terms of this definition under color. As you can see, it says, it has also been held that there is no legal technical signification to the phrase colored person, quote unquote, which the courts are bound judicially to know. Let's read that one more time. It has also been held that there is no legal technical signification to the phrase colored persons, quote unquote, which the courts are bound judicially to know. Then you have your case law. Well, what does that mean? The courts do not have to respect anyone that doesn't have respect for themselves. As soon as you walk in, call yourself a colored person, and you mark the box for a crayon, i.e. a black person, you immediately are telling the courts that you are incompetent because you don't have a fundamental understanding of what colored person means or colored means as it relates to law. You don't understand the legal ramifications of checking certain boxes. So as mores, conscious mores or unconscious mores, we need to start really understanding the fundamentals of words. So I am Justice J. Bay, and I'm bringing to you the definition and interpretation of words that will be have the fundamentals down pat. I'm J. Bay with Lodi and Morris Pradium, Auntie Colorado. Thank you.